Geneva. Here in the loop, we're here to discuss the ups, downs, and sideways of the sport of figure skating, and maybe give you plus 5 GOE along the way. Let's introduce this week's hosts. I'm Yogita, and I hope all of our listeners had a happy holiday. You can find me on Twitter at LilyOrum. Hey, I'm Nina, and I hope nationals weren't too stressful for you guys over the holidays. You can find me on Twitter at Yonkai Tempu. Hi, I'm Kite, and I want to wish you all a happy new year. I'm on Twitter at Mossy Zinc. And I'm Sam. I hope that everyone had an awesome holiday season and that that carries over into the new year for you all. You can follow me at Quadlets with a need for Edge Call on Twitter. All right. Some news for y'all. Penny Coombs and Nicholas Buckland announced their engagement. Obviously, we want to extend our warmest congratulations to them. Hoping to see them back competing soon, too, next season, maybe. But yeah, that's always nice to have some happy news to start it off. In some not-so-happy news, Zapiaco and Embert have pulled out of Euros because of an unspecified illness. Continuing in some sad news, Kevin Reynolds of Canada has announced his retirement from skating. He hasn't had the best season, um, but he did have some great skates last season, so I'm wishing him the best. Um, and Gabriel David of Canada is returning for Canadian Nationals. Hopefully we'll be able to see her return soon, and it goes well. In more news and a bit of a content warning for those people who might be sensitive, um, the Dennis 10 murder case has been expanded to investigate the possibility of assassination. This was news that we got from Kazakh news sources in the past week. So we will all be waiting, of course, to see how that um, pans out. And in much happier news, Chinese nationals happened over the past few days. Um, So the champions of Chinese nationals and men, Steen Boyang, who finally skated a clean free skate after having a pretty tough season and broke 300 total um, in the total score, and ladies uh, Yi Chris Liang of Hong Kong, in pairs uh, Peng Cheng and Jing Yang, and then in ice dance Wang Shiyue and Liu Xinyu. And also for pairs enthusiasts out there, um, Olympic silver medalists Sui Wenjing and Han Song have returned to competition. Um, they were out because um, Wenjing had a recurring ankle slash foot injury and they were not competing on the Grand Prix this season, and they only competed in the short program. But it does sound like they will be going to four continents and possibly worlds in the spring. So very excited to see them back in competition. And also, Carolina Costner of Italy is not really recovered, is not totally recovered from her fall yet, and she will not be competed at Euros. We publish a weekly roundup of news stories that you might have missed during the week on our website. So if you go to inthelowpodcast.com, you'll be able to find all of our articles there. Well, for four minutes there, I forgot I was meant to be commentating. (laughs) To start off our coverage this week, we're going to be talking about Russia Nationals. In pairs, our first place team were uh, Evgenia Tarasova and Vladimir Morozov. In second were Natalia Zabiako and Alexander Embert. And in third were Alexander Boykova and Dmitry Kolovsky. Um, all of them showcase an absolute master ca- class in Paris technique, what's hard to duplicate even at Worlds in their free skates. Um, Tarasov and Morozov were by far the highlight after skating clean for maybe the first time ever in their senior career. <laughs> um, it's really hard to think of one where they were like totally perfect and they were that day, but they proved what a lot of us have been saying for a while. They should honestly be the number one pair team in the world. They have easily the best elements of anybody out there. Uh, but the seniors weren't the only ones to step up. Pairs like Mishna and Galimov had their say too. From top to bottom, it was obvious. Russia has the deepest pair of field in the world, and it's not even really a close. Uh, it's honestly a shame that they all can't go compete at their respective worlds. Kind of like the Japanese ladies. I-, I wasn't particularly a fan of all of their programs. Uh, pretty few of them, if I'm being completely honest. But like, when going back to like Tarasov and Morozov should be the number one pair team in the world. Well, people would say, well, yeah, but, like, they shouldn't be getting as high as PCS, like a Swayanhan or a um, James and C. Prey. But it's important to point out that most PCS categories aren't actually tied to your personal taste in the program. Things like skating skills and transitions and composition don't all encompass that. So the combination of their elements being plus five GOE, like, automatically throw it at them when they do things right, plus having insanely good basics all combined. So if they skate clean... They, they should probably win most of the time. 
For me, I think the most interesting thing was Tarasova and Morozov skating clean. You might want to point out and be like, well, yeah, it, it's nationals. It should be not as stressful, but I don't really think that's the case in this national. <laughs> I don't think it's any less stressful for them to have like a Zabiako and Embert not that far behind them when they're also skating clean in their short program to then go into a free skate. Being the first to skate in that f- last final three and knowing you have to knock it out of the park because if you falter, another team could take over and surpass you. So I don't know if that's necessarily the case that it was less stressful for them, but I'm hoping, like I said, that this is a turnaround and they um, have more success in the free skate, especially internationally. Finally, after this very long monologue, I just want to say, <laughs> everybody out there, can we please get Moscovina a box so she can see over the boards? Please? She's like barely covering it up in her he- with her head barely over the boards. For those who don't know, she is a famous para coach. Uh, she was Boykova and Kolaski's coach. She had some of the other junior pairs. Um, she was that little tiny woman that like literally was like just barely peeking over. Like, can we just get her something so she can see? Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just picturing like a very old flower girl. <laughs> <laughs> she basically is their height. She might even be shorter. <laughs> I will say it for just for upcoming Euros, uh, both James and Cipre and Tarasov and, and Morozov skated their best free skates of the season this se- uh, at their nationals, so I'm interested to see how their second matchup's going to look like at Europeans. Um, we also had the men's skate. For the gold medal, we had Maxim Kovtun. Uh, for the silver medal, we had Mikhail Kolyada. And the bronze medal went to Alexander Samarin. I'm like, I've been endlessly amused for like the past week that Russia's top two men are both skating to Carmen this season. And even more so that they're, like, good Carmens. It's Battle of the Carmens, the sequel, kite. Okay. And they're such different Carmens, too, because, like, Mikhail has, like, the traditional, like, men's Carmen where he's super grounded and, like, skating with strength and power. And then, like, you have Max over there using Habanera, which is, like, the woman's aria. Like, being his sexy self, his <laughs> gender doesn't exist, y'all. And it's just like, yes, please, like, give us everything you possibly can in, like, two separate ways. And, like, it's... I can't... Honestly, I'm shocked that I liked both of them because I am, like, a notorious Carmen hater and I don't want anything to do with it most of the time. <laughs> but, like, Max Sims was really fun. Yeah, especially at the end, like, when he's coming out of the Euler combo and he starts dramatically running. It's like, yes, <laughs> this is the stuff I want. Yeah, that was, like, my favorite, like, yeah, that was my favorite part of it. But it was just really good to see him back in competition, I think, because he's been gone for so long. He was out with injury for a long time. And then never just really, like, picked up the momentum that he had a couple years ago when he was a rising senior. And it was just super nice to see him have really, really solid skates here and take back the Russian title. And like Sam said, especially the final um, choreographic sequence in the free skate where the music starts building and his footwork starts building and he's using his toe picks to, like, run across the ice. Oh, so good. And he has his quads back and they look really, really good, too. His so. quads are so big and he snaps into rotation super fast. Yeah, he obviously had a little bit of issue on the toe in the free skate. He slipped and was completely outside the circle when he was up in the air, <laughs> which is why he had that full body fall. But both of the salves were really good. And I love the placement of them. Um, The first one being on like the obvious subtle note, and then the second one being on the offbeat of the chime. So he's landing it with the run of the note. And I love stuff like that. And it was just A plus, A plus. I really like the short program too. It was such a fun program. And you could tell he really like enjoyed it. Uh, I like rewatch that step sequence in the short like 20 times it was so perfectly choreographed to the music he hits like every musical accent and when nobody usually hits their I, I musical accent it's like very noticeable to me when like someone's actually choreographing to like try and do that um and for me it didn't even feel like he was overperforming. he definitely knew how to sell that program just right and i was so happy to see him come back and do so well here Yeah, and it's especially interesting because Max was never, like, the guy you would point to and be like, he listens to his music. He was, like, the quirky (laughs) Russian with, like, the I Can't Dance program that you're like, what is this? Or the Hitchhiker program where you're like, this is kind of weird, but I'm into it. But he wasn't like, yeah, this guy, he's got all the the bits from top to bottom where, like, these two programs are, like, choreographed in a way that it really, like, makes him shine in ways you hadn't seen before. And I really like them both. That's why good choreography is important. It can showcase the skaters' elements that you didn't realize they had. Hopefully this will be a big boost for his confidence and his reputation, too, going into Euros, and hopefully Worlds if he does well at Euros. Speaking of other men who did well when it counted, 
um, Mika Kalyata. I'm glad that he lived. He did. He did live, considering the fact that he has had sinusitis all season, apparently, and couldn't even start training until the Thursday before the competition started. And he actually hung on to his jumps, even though he did make some mistakes in the free skate. He usually kind of falls apart after the first mistake and just like pops the rest of his jumps or falls or something. But he actually like hung on to his jumps. I was really impressed. And he really needed a good outing here to prove that he should be sent to the championships in the spring because he didn't do super well on the Grand Prix. And so the fact that he was able to deliver under these really unfortunate circumstances, I think hopefully bodes well for how he's going to do um, later on in the season. Yeah. Well, I hope it gives him some good momentum, because didn't he also do well at uh, Golden Spin? Yeah, he, that was his best comp of the season by far. Yeah, so hopefully it's it's a, it's a late, it's a later start than he would have liked, but it's giving him some momentum. All, like, all I really wanted was for him to, to actually just like get out of this competition alive, especially after we saw that he was still feeling very sick and that he definitely looked like he wasn't feeling doing his best, especially in a short program. It felt a lot less energetic than it usually does, but he did skate probably one of his better free skates of the season here. So hopefully he's taking some time now to recover uh, before returning to training for Euros. I'm just shocked that he was able to even get through a free skate. I don't know how he did it. I can't walk up the stairs when I have a head cold. <laughs> so like the fact that he like made it through relatively fine. Like, it wasn't a great free skate. It wasn't a bad free skate. It was just fine. Like, that is insanely impressive to me. I don't necessarily think it was the smartest decision, but he was kind of backed into a corner where if he didn't skate, who knows if he would have been assigned to anything else because of how his lackluster performance is on the Grand Prix. So I understand why he did it, but... Yeah, it's not the same as Lisa, who had to take off because she had done well on the Grand Prix. Yeah. I just love that program so much. It genuinely might be my favorite free skate for men. Like, period. Yeah, Carmen is my favorite free skate on the men's side. Like, period. What happened to Sam? Yeah, I know, right? Uh, Um, But, like, he's just, his body positions are so great. He skates, like, from his core and just holds out every single position. Like, I would honestly give it a 10 in composition every single time he skates. It's just that good. I love it so much. It's, I agree, it's probably my favorite program from the men's this season for free skates. I'm trying to think, and there's really nothing else that can top this. I really want to see a clean Cartman, guys. Moving on to our bronze medalist, Alexander Samarin. This is Samarin's third medal at Nationals, and I don't understand what Russia sees in him. He can consistently land his jumps. And I think that's it. <laughs> Yay! But he doesn't have, like, super great entries into those jumps, and his landings aren't very good either. I'm still very confused how his quadlets triple toe combo got plus 4.27 GOE in his free skate because for something to get over plus 3 GOE it has to have very good height and distance, good takeoff and landing, and be effortless throughout. And I don't even think that jump combo was effortless throughout. His landings are so crunchy. They land with a little bit of a thud. They're not like aesthetically pleasing in any sense of the word. I don't know if you could say aesthetically pleasing for any bit of his skating to be honest. I'm gonna stop there though because my mom always said if you don't have anything nice to say don't say it at all. He just he lands on like a straight leg and so you kind of see him like fish hook out of the jump because he doesn't have the knee bend to get that really nice like running edge coming out. So he should never be able to get the good takeoff and landing bullet straight out of the gate. Also, like, his takeoffs are often on pretty shallow edges sometimes, especially his Lutz. It's it's like, it's enough to be a Lutz, but it's not particularly deep or clear. Outside of the jumps, Samurai moves pretty awkwardly on ice. He doesn't really have much awareness of his body, but he somehow got 9.18 in performance for his free skate, and I I, I don't understand, guys. I don't. Yeah, he also got 9.18 in interpretation. I'm still kind of reeling that he got higher skating skills marks at IDF than Jason. That's just, like, that just tells you everything you kind of need Excuse to know. Excuse me. You kind of need to know about about where he's scored in relation to what's actually accurate, and a lot of it's just kind of like a head-scratcher where you're like, I don't really understand what you're seeing here. Jason Brown didn't move to Canada for this. <laughs> 
Well, he will be going to Euros, so we'll see how he stacks up. And most likely Worlds. Yep, most likely Worlds. Honestly, I mean, the Russian men who had it rough, so I can see why they're pushing him, because for a while he was the only one who could land. So. Speaking of other tragic Russian men, Dmitry Aliyev, I... Would love to know what's going on with him and his axles. He didn't jump an axle in the short program, which is one of the required elements in the short program. So unfortunately, he buried himself by missing one of the three jumping passes and couldn't quite get it together enough to be named to the Euros team, which probably is also going to take him out of contention for Worlds, unfortunately. I mean, he's like the third alternate for Euros. Yeah, he hasn't actually skated consistent skate of both of his programs this season. He's consistently done really well in one and fallen apart in the other somehow. I'm just so confused by the axle issues because he never really had a problem before. Like his axle was fine, but it's twice now where he just didn't do one. I, I don't even know what to say because like what could have happened over the summer where it just like literally his jump died. I mean the first time it at least he like kind of replaced it and it's like maybe you just like thought you did it already mm-hmm. but this time it's like you clearly knew what you were doing and then didn't do it. I hope it's not becoming like a mental block for him where he like sees that he's going in for the axle and he's like nope not today. It makes me sad because he really does have he has some of my favorite programs this this season just because he's really really lovely to watch when he's when it's just his his movements. Moving on to other men who are not on the Euros teams because Russia hates him. Uh, Sergei Vironov. He is the one Russian man that actually made it to the Grand Prix final but apparently he Russia hates him. My guy could have skated and gotten 300 total and Russ Fed still would have been like yeah nah thanks move on <laughs> like he made the Grand Prix final last year didn't have a great Nats and they were like yeah no you're not in contention for everything it's no big deal like he only skated better than every single other man you had but whatever we're fine I'm fine I'm not bitter about that at all <laughs> I, I'm still bitter that he didn't get to go to the Olympics last year do we want to do good Russia do we want spots or do we just want to like promote the people we like <laughs> Make a choice. <laughs> He's not an up-and-coming junior, so Russia doesn't know what to do with him. Doesn't Russia only have, like, one up-and-coming junior? In men's? I had, like, a fever dream during Grand Prix Final. I'm pretty sure there was only, like, one Russian man there. In yeah, juniors. it was Peter Gumenik. Gumenik. Yeah. Oh, who was also out with an upper respiratory infection or something. Russian national sponsored by Sudafed. Moving on to our Ice Dance medalists. In gold, we have Victoria Sinitsina and Nikita Katsalopov. In silver, we have Alexandra Stepanova and Ivan Bukin. And in third, we have Sofia Evdovkimova and Igor Bazin. So, gold medalist Sinitsina Katsalopov. So I understand on like, an impartial basis why uh, Victoria and Nikita won, but like, why? <laughs> but like, the existential why still persists. Like, I'm not joking. Their free dance is just so boring. and There's no chemistry. And I don't get it because their rhythm dance is very good and very enjoyable to watch. And then their free dance is glass. Like, there's a glass wall up between me and any emotions I could be getting from it. Yeah, for me, like, the best way that I can describe it is, like, pretty music meant to emphasize pretty lines means nothing when you don't have anything to say with it. Like, there's no, like, inherent, like story between them there's no like connection to like how they're supposed to feel while they're listening to this pretty music that's meant to make them look pretty and it's just all kind of like mushed together to make something that's pretty boring sam is probably gonna fight me on this but i think their free dance is so boring because they don't actually have any real chemistry which i think you need to have if you're gonna skate to a piece like bog where it's really slow and really nice and really melodic the two people really have to have like this connection that carries the music because the music is not going to carry you and I think Nikita still does a lot of the heavy lifting of the two in terms of skating skills and performance and like yeah she's gotten better but I think he still kind of drags her around the ice most of the time and it's like oh we're gonna hit this position now in this position and she's just kind of there I I don't necessarily disagree but I will say that like I think they deserve every mark they get for their rhythm dance okay, I like that rhythm dance because <laughs> they drill that pattern consistently every single time like it, it's probably the best performed pattern of the year from anybody literally like i said on a consistent basis at every competition they do they do it the best which 
is saying a lot when most people's patterns, unfortunately, suck. Uh, so, like, that gives them a huge advantage going into the free dance, even though their free dance isn't necessarily great. Uh, and, like, I, I agree with you guys. I do think Nikita is obviously the heavy lifter in the group. I just think that Victoria should get a little bit of the credit for how far she's come since they first partnered together. And I will say that she hits a beautiful line in a lift. Their lifts are great when she, like, elongates that leg out. Because she has super long legs, too. When she bends them right, she makes her positions look very nice. She's not as leggy as Alexandra, but she's cleaner with those long legs than Alexandra is. What do they put in the water over there? I want some of that leg juice. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Speaking of Alexandra, Stepanova and Buchan, I was just really sad because I really wanted them to win. I was really rooting for them. Uh, This was probably their best pattern work that they've done all season. Victoria and Nikita were just better. I'm like, Alexandra, Yvonne, please get your levels. Like, they got level three on both parts of the Tango Romantica pattern in the rhythm dance versus level four for Victoria and Nikita. And so that's a one point difference in base value right out of the gate. And they were only behind by about two points going into the free skate. So they could have narrowed that lead pretty considerably if they had hit all of the elements that the pattern required. And Yogita's right that at least Yvonne didn't get like a B for basic pattern this time. They're making progress from Grand Prix Final. Can't you make the progress where it counts? Well, Russian Nationals counts too. Like, no, I, I mean, like, can't you get more progress at Nationals, which counts? It's just frustrating because they're like, even on home ice, they're scored so close to Victoria, Nikita, and PCS. Like, I was actually really surprised how close PCS were because they were within 0.5 of a point in both segments of the competition. Weren't they farther apart PCS-wise at the final? I can't remember, like, exactly the numbers were, but it wasn't nearly that close. It was definitely more than 0.5. Yeah, so that's interesting. Yeah, given how clearly, like, Victoria and Nikita are the skaters that Rustfed is pushing, I'm very, very surprised that PCS are that close. And Stepanova and Buchan went into the Grand Prix final as the top Russian team. They had two gold medals in the Grand Prix. So I think maybe that's what's giving them a boost at home, but they're still not doing enough to overtake, which they would get that much closer if they just got their levels on the pattern, please. That's all I want. Like, New Year's resolution, guys. Get your levels. I will say I stand by what I said in the Ross Telecom Cup episode, that if they really drill their program and skate lights out in the free dance later on in the season, they could easily still vault themselves into second in the world because their programs have so much intensity to them and are more engaging, I think, than as two programs and maybe anybody else except for maybe Papadakis and Cizeron. I think they easily could like just blow everybody else out of the water if they do what they have to do technically, which they're not doing right now. I just wanted to speak quickly to Tiffany and Jonathan, who had some unfortunate issues here. Yeah, they've just had like a really off season from Tiffany's knee injury, delaying training over the summer. So they didn't really start practicing their programs until end of summer. Um, They never really quite hit the elements of their free dance well enough. So it's always looked pretty awkward. And just having Jonathan's boots coming undone during that free dance just threw that entire thing off. Uh, They're currently, in my opinion, Russia's third best ice dance team, but with them not making Euros team, coupled with like the rest of their mistakes this season, this is going to be a huge hit for their momentum, and they're definitely allowing other ice dance teams to like take that place as third best. Yeah, it's a huge opportunity for a team like Hawaii can Baker if they make it to four continents and become like the third or, and there are the third U.S. ice dance team which I I pretty much expect them to be with like Chalk and Bates and Hubble and Donahue because that's their main competition is Hawaii and Baker I think in f- terms of ranking so if Hawaii and Baker go to four continents and Tiffany and Jonathan are at home still not being able to go to Euros there's a huge opportunity for them to like step over them and like move up. Okay, so moving on to the Russian ladies and Edelis. In first place, we had Anna Shcherbakova. Second place, Alexandra Trusova. Third place, Alyona Kosternaya. And I would like to ask the class, what is the common trend on the ladies' podium? It's this year? Harry Juniors. It's Harry. They're all Russian juniors. I was gonna say they were juniors, but yeah, that kind of kind of goes hand in hand at this point, right? Yeah, I mean, she's the one who's pushing these juniors way up in the ranks with uh, TES. I will say though, I do think all of the juniors, not just the Atari juniors, outskated the seniors. 
pretty much on like from top to bottom they were all much more consistent and much more on top of it than a lot of the seniors were like Soskova did not have a great competition Polina did not have a great competition obviously Evgenia struggled in the short program like they I think for the most part they all pretty much skated close to clean yeah I think the closest Russian senior lady to consistent this comp was uh, Sophia. She's basically the most consistent skater in the world, so yeah. Yes. The one that just came out of juniors. Lisa was out, though. She had uh, she had pneumonia. So on to Anna Sherbakova. So I was really, really, really happy that she could have a good skate here after she kind of struggled a little bit at Grand Prix Final, landing her jumps. So I'm really hoping that this is going to help her confidence going into junior worlds, because that opening quad lutz in her free skate was so big. And it was actually rotated. I was like, oh my god, that was not something that I saw coming. Like, I actually dropped whatever I was holding in my hand at the time because I was so, like, just shook by how good, like, all of the elements of that jump were. And I will credit her team in saying that they made the right choice by only, quote unquote, only putting one quad in the free skate because she's really had some issues landing the quad lutz this season. Like, I don't think she got it at all on the Junior Grand Prix and she took a pretty nasty fall. Like, she took many falls during practice at Grand Prix Final. Then she she took a nasty fall in the actual program, too. So I think by only putting one in there and kind of, like, removing that pressure from her after she's landed it is was good and definitely helped her get the title here. Yeah, after all the struggles that we saw her have at Junior Grand Prix Final, she definitely deserved to have the two great skates she had here. I think this is the first time this season that she's had to clean programs? I think she did at her first Grand Prix because she didn't do the quad. Yeah, she went for the triple lutz to open, I think, at the first one. But ever since she's added the quad, this has been the first time that she's had two clean skates. Yeah, I, I thought she did well, and I'm, I'm happy for her. I still think the her free skate music is a little bit heavy for her um, in terms of tone and her ability to perform it, and also just her costume is very, very fussy looking and kind of weighs her down, though it is pretty. Um, and I still don't know how I feel about juniors really boosting their TES um, with quads, um, but her PCS aren't like by the wayside because she does have so- like somewhat solid skating skills, and she doesn't seem to be 100% dependent on having quads to win, um, especially since she won here with only one versus Alexandra Trusova. I'm going to be really honest for both Sherbakova and Trusova. The minute like they're done with their quads and they've lived, I'm just kind of like completely removed from what's going on and just so relieved that they're okay. So it's hard for me to like accurately judge how good their programs are or like what's happening afterwards because I'm just so like focused on the one like moment and then I'm out. That said though, I do agree with Nina and I think the free is a little too heavy for her. I think it has more to do with the costume for me than the music because it's just a lot and she's very slight and tiny and it kind of overwhelms her but that said she's a beautiful skater she's really fast her spins are great she's super flexible I wish she would hold an edge out of her jumps just once because I'd like to see what it looks like because like Eliona has that beautiful ending line position when she lands a jump and just holds it out and it's the most gorgeous thing in the world so I'd like to see her and Trusseville both try that to see because if to gauge better if they ha- are having a running edge, because for me that affects their GOE on their jumps. Um, that said, though, I am concerned about the quads because you can tell that both her and Trusova are are using their back a lot to go ahead and vault themselves up in the air, which like anybody over twenty can attest to. When you accidentally try to pick something up that's heavy and you're using um, your upper body instead of your legs to pick it up. It hurts a lot afterwards, so I can't imagine what it's like to be that young and be constantly using your upper body to jump, and then what your back must feel like as you start to get older. I think you can see that, especially with Alina and Evgenia now. Um, they're very, their skating is a lot more hunchy, especially on their toe combos, where they're hunching down into the second takeoff for the toe to be able to get up in the air, and I think that that's the biggest drawback of Acheri's technique is that because she's teaching them to jump with their upper body, there is no longevity for them going on further because you, your body, as you get older, your body can't do, handle that the same and your rotational speed isn't fast enough to compensate for your lack of height because you're not using your legs to jump. Yeah. Lift with your legs, not with your back yep. is the lesson for all you non-skaters <laughs> out there. And yeah, she could be teaching, you know, really good technique to get them in the air. But instead, we have Alexandra Trusova, the silver medalist, training a quad flip. 
<laughs> well, we, we saw her practicing a quad flip. We don't know if she's ever going to use it in competition. So I, It's true. She's going to use it in competition. <laughs> I feel pretty confident in saying that that girl will try anything. If you could told her, told her like, yeah, we're going to do quad axles in the harness today, I think she would jump at the chance. Okay, if someone told me I was doing quad axles in a harness, I would jump at the chance. <laughs> I would not, because that sounds like hell. Um, <laughs> but Trusifa did also land a quad, a quad let's um, in her free skate. She fell on her quad toe, but she still ended up with the third highest TS of the entire event, including the men. Which, like, what else can you do but shake your head at her now? I mean, like, honestly, that she's a little firecracker. I don't think... She's not the most musical skater, especially out of the three Terry Juniors. For me, she's like third on the PCS front, and I think that's where she should be scored. But what else can you say about her? She's tenacious. She's a fighter. She's clearly super athletic. She jumps, she's, again, she's still jumping with her back, especially on the quads, but on her triple, she's using her legs more than the other, than I think Anna does. Um, that said, like I said before, I don't remember much about her program outside of the quads, but I will say her her opening miming choreo where she goes in front of the judges and does like the I'm inside the box and then she punches them is like my favorite thing. I, I feel that. I have to admit, I, I like the programs that she was given this season for highlighting the fact that she isn't the most traditionally musical. And I think that especially her free skate is really fun when it gets very like aggressive. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I just I do think that she could stand to work on her components more. But it, I think that picking in, it, like interesting pieces of music is actually a good choice for her. And I would like to see that continue. So moving on to bronze medalist for the second year running, Aliona Kostanaya. I just want to say that she would have won the entire event if she hadn't fallen on the step sequence in the short program. And I'm going to die on this hill. And my heart agrees with you. Uh, my conservative brain says that they might have given her silver. Um, because of the less aggressive jumping passes, but really she she deserved to win. <laughs> yeah, she lost two points for that fall, minus one on her base value, and then another deduction for the fall. So her PCS probably took a small hit there as well. I can't say who would have won. I agree, I would have loved her to win, but it definitely would have been very, very close between the top three. And for me, she's the Toko category, where I'm like, if her 77 PCS or bust just for standing there... <laughs> So in my head, she should have won anyway, but I'm like, I'm not going to fight for it. I understand why she didn't, but her PCS should be... She should have won PCS across the board in the entire competition, and I'm kind of upset she didn't. I was just going to say, it's hard to fault them for not letting her win when she did take a random stumble and fall in her step sequence. That's not a good look to have. She sh- she definitely deserved like higher PCS. The fact that her PCS was so close to Constantinova's hurts me. Again, like, girl, fix your leg wrap, please. Like, on the double axle, especially. It's super obvious. We did get video over the past few days, which is apparently an old, like, training video that resurfaced on Instagram for training the triple axle. And her leg position does look a lot better on that jump. And the triple axle looks really great. And it's fully rotated, at least to the naked eye. So I hope it'll be ready for competition when she joins the senior ranks because, (laughs) quite frankly, I think she's going to need it to actually be competitive as a senior. But yeah, there's there's obviously still some issues with her technique that her team needs to work on. And will they? That's debatable. But. I wonder if the leg wrap comes if because she is training a triple axle, so the double axle is, you know, less tight, less con- less uh, clean like that because um, it does get very very high. Yeah, she I mean her double axle looks like a pop triple axle. It really does. Like when you see like some of the senior men who pop quads into doubles, like that's what their leg position looks like. But because it's in, it's intended to be a double, I think the leg wrap should still hurt her GOE because she shouldn't be able to get the good body position bullet. And personally, I would argue it doesn't make the jump look effortless throughout, quote unquote, because your legs are bent at this like awkward angle. But I mean, that's like a pretty small, I think, nitpick in the grand scheme of her skating, which I think it is lovely. I, I would like to say that I do think that even if she doesn't have the triple axle, she's still going to be competitive in the senior ranks because uh, she has such great skating. And especially since the judges this season are definitely trying to send the message that the new uh, judging system with the GOE is, with the plus or minus five GOE, is meant to help reward that quality of skating which Aliona has. Oh boy, she has that quality. I do think that she needs the triple axle to really be competitive for like top podium spots because she'll have been just coming up from juniors 
Um, she's going to be a Russian lady in a field that's pretty big, and I don't know if she's going to be pushed by them as like a heavy favorite right away. And the Japanese ladies are still also right up there with all of them. I don't know if I'm like, you need the hardest jumps to be able to make podiums now, because like for a lot of skaters, they're saying they're training triple axles or they're saying they want to do quads, but we haven't seen them even in training videos. So it's hard to say like when those will actually be in competition. And like right now, we only have two skaters that are doing triple axles. One, Elizaveta Tuktamishva, who is beaten consistently by skaters with less technical content, and Rika Kihira, who... While she should win when she's clean, she's only been clean in both segments once so far this season, and she's only a first-year senior. Um, So I'm not necessarily concerned about where her place will be when she becomes a senior next season, because like Yogita said, there's obvious room for a skater with insane quality who does it consistently to rise through the ranks quickly, and that's traditionally how you get higher PCS um, when you first become a senior. You skate consistently. And you make the judges pay attention to you, and that's when your PCS starts to rise. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, I think, obviously, the trend is to push for higher technical content in ladies, but I don't think we're at a place yet where, like, you need the technical content to beat skaters that already have it. I think there's plenty of room for a PCS skater with quality jumps to still get ahead when when they're clean. Well, yeah, like Yogita said, I think that the judges are definitely actually using the scoring system the way that it was meant to be used, which is to reward the quality of your elements over quantity slash your technical content, which we saw with Jason Brown at IDF, who nearly broke 100 without a quad in the short program. And Aliona is kind of the same. She doesn't do quads and she doesn't do the triple loop combos. Um, But this is the second time in a month that we've seen the judges willing to score her close to or above the quadsters anyway, just based on how well she executes her elements and also her PCS. And ultimately, I think slash hope that she's making the smart choice by playing the long game, which is to say that she's relying on her consistency and just how lovely and pure her skating is in reducing her risk of injury. So two of Atari's skaters or former skaters who didn't have such great showings this this competition um, are starting to make people talk about, you know, the longevity of her technique and just the longevity of her skaters. Um, So first, we had Alina Zagitova in a rather disappointing finish for her, I'm sure. This is the part where we kind of start going through the aftermath of the technique that Terry teaches and that Sam gave us a very good rundown of earlier in the episode. So we saw saw it with Yulia Lipnitskaya, and we kind of saw the beginnings of it with Yevgenia um, before she moved. And now we're seeing it again with Alina, and that's that the jump technique that the Terry camp teaches will inevitably start to fail the skater sometime during the second senior season, like like clockwork during the second senior season is when you can start see their techniques start to fall apart. And so how Evgenia managed to keep her jumps intact will never cease to amaze me because she was basically landing, especially her double axle through like sheer willpower. Like physically that axle should never have gotten off the ground. I mean, you can see she would like rotate it with her shoulders before she got off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And there's like, when we were talking about earlier that they were jumping with their upper body, there's no way to do an axle with your upper body and make it look nice. Exactly. <laughs> like, you need you need to be using your lower body and you're free like to kick yourself up into the air to be able to get an effective axle. So the fact that like that jump even still, I think the fact that that jump is still even feasible for her is kind of incredible. And like Alina was injured. Um, at Russian Nationals, as far as we know, she injured herself at Grand Prix Final by tripping over one of like the power cables. And so there's no way that the injury had healed within two weeks if she was training towards Nationals at the same time. But I think skating through injury is another hallmark of why Sambo 70, which is a Terry's camp, um, why their training methods ultimately fail their skaters because Alina was visibly not ready to compete. And like, frankly, she didn't need to compete because she did well enough on the Grand Prix that she was basically guaranteed a spot at Euros, and then there she could make the case for the world team instead of needing to push herself through injury and risk re-aggravating the injury in order to have a good showing at Russian Nationals when ultimately it's not her priority as a skater, frankly. I was just going to say skating through injury, don't forget that Alina still has Osgood Schlatter disease and isn't taking off time to rest like she needs to even let that sort of condition uh de-inflame. Speaking from personal experience, like, that is a really terrible condition to have to deal with. Like, it hurts to walk. So I don't know how she is going out there and banging out, like, 
triple lutz triple loop combos and there was a picture of her ankle and it was still visibly swollen so and it's not like there isn't precedent for someone withdrawing from russian nationals and still making Dero's team if genya had to withdraw last season from uh, russian nationals due to injury and she still made it to europeans and alina definitely did not need to go to russian nationals and it's important to point out that like being injured is another hallmark of what happens with the Terry skaters. They all have like their fabulous first senior season or their fabulous final last junior season. They move up, they take everything by storm, and then their second season, Evgenia aside, they get injured, things get harder, they grow up, and then suddenly they're they're gone. And it's really sad to see. It's not fun to talk about. It's not fun to talk about with these juniors now. I understand why everybody like why people want to be like, oh my god, what they're doing is so impressive. But when you pay attention to the patterns and you see what happens with her skaters going forward, it's hard to be happy about these incredibly talented girls being this successful doing these quads when you know the success rate going forward. It's, I think, doubly just really difficult to watch because Alina came into the season as a pretty strong contender for the world title, especially at Nebelhorn, where she broke the world record in both um, segments of the competition at her very first outing and generally looked pretty good and then I think the season for her has kind of derailed to the point where it's in question whether she's even going to make the world podium because I personally can think of at least three ladies who could beat her internationally and even her performances on the Grand Prix even though she won both of her assignments and she was second at the final she was noticeably labored and her jumps were just not not working for her anymore and she got pretty lucky because she was assigned to two competitions where their fields were pretty watered down and she didn't really have any rivals and it's not like next season is necessarily going to be easier for her either because all of the juniors Trusova, Sherbakova, and Kostrinaya are all going to be moving up to seniors so she really needed this season to kind of prove internationally that she was the top lady in the world before the crop of juniors come in And given the history of young senior superstars coming out of Atari's camp, like Sam said, I really worry about what's going to happen that now that she's not delivering. And in a similar vein, I don't know why I had to see a video of her training a quad flip and harness. I didn't deserve that. I don't think anyone deserved that. I don't think Alina deserved that. Yeah, I don't know if her team actually is planning to prep her for a quad flip. I really hope they're not. But I think... I'd hope they would realize that the more immediate issue right now is the fact that she's barely even rotating her triples. Like, I don't know if I've seen her land a clean triple let's combo all season. I mean, I'm hoping that it was because, like you mentioned, the Aliona uh, triple axel video was apparently, like, old footage. um, And we don't know when the Truceva video is from. We don't necessarily know when this is from. And it could hopefully just be like, you know, it's a training day. Let's bring out the harness and try some big jumps. I mean, honestly, I am starting to wonder and starting to worry if she's going to continue to be competitive at all because she doesn't seem to have her triples. Um, I worry that she's not going to be able to get them back due to her health issues and the technique issues. And then she's getting a lot of high marks because her team is really pushing her because she's their only top senior lady now. And right now is still somewhat competitive on the international field. But when the juniors move up, I'm not sure if she's going to be able to stay competitive and if they're going to need to continue to push for her. Yeah, I mean, there isn't really a precedent for Terry still prioritizing you after she's found somebody else to re- replace you who's doing better than you. That sounds really harsh to say, but like even watching her in the kiss and cries here at Russia Nationals, she was in view of the camera during Sherbakova's escape, but she wasn't over by the boards with her. And like she was visibly upset <laughs> almost when Trusova didn't win. Like she was like hitting her leg in like frustration. Or even at the Olympics when Evgenia didn't win and she saw Alina score, she didn't look happy for her. That's how it works in Sambo 70 when someone younger with better tech comes along. She clearly has her favorites, and I don't think she necessarily, like, prioritizes them all the same. Like, she she clearly, like, goes for the one, and that's her one skater, even though she has a wealth of talent around her. And I just, like, for me, it's just not comfortable to watch Alina skate at this point. She doesn't look comfortable. In fact, I, I visibly can't look at her when she's opening her Carmen free skate because she just does not look like she's into it. She looks panicked. Yeah, like, her, that, the smile is, like, not engaging in, like, a helpful way. It's just not... It's, it just looks like she's out of it. 
and like her movement isn't like connected or smooth or like again I guess comfortable is the word she just doesn't look like she's enjoying skating right now and she might love it still and she might be happy when she's out on the ice practicing but when she's competing she doesn't look like she is it looks like she's really stressed out competing because every competition for her position in her camp is so stressful and up in the air yeah it's like every single competition she's like i have to show why i'm still here yeah i hope that after a season she does leave the etery camp and finds another coach but i don't know if it's too late to save her I don't even know if it's even just that. I think if you told me at the beginning of the season that she was the one who had left a Terry instead of Evgenia, I would have had, like, a lot more hope for her because her jumps weren't at a place, even though I didn't necessarily think they were looking great over the summer, they weren't in a place where, like, I thought that she was beyond help. That said, though, like, just because of how unprecedented it is to leave a Terry and, like, still be successful afterwards and find a coach that can completely overhaul your jumps the way they need to be overhauled because they need, like, from the ground up to just take a couple years and just fix everything. I don't know, like, what she could conceivably do to fix it, Her, especially where her skating is right now and with the injuries. Yeah, I, I honestly think people who are calling for her to leave a Terry... I mean, they do have her best interests in mind, I think. But I think maybe they failed to recognize that what Yevgenia did at the end of last season, like how unprecedented it was for especially a Russian lady to be training outside of Russia and still have like some measure of success, especially after leaving a Terry's camp as, you know, a, a second or third season senior. That is not something that I think we have ever seen before. So there's a lot more factors in consideration there than just, you know, Alina can leave a Terry and then some other coach is going to be able to save her jumps and her competitive mentality, and she's still going to be able to be as dominant as she was in her first season. It's not as simple as that. And those are all things that need to be considered. Speaking of Evgenia, it's not like she had the easiest process this season, and that really showed itself here. Yeah, so moving on to Evgenia Medvedeva. She did change her short program. There, it, it was rumored that she would be because there was a video that surfaced of her training to some other music and she's skating to Tosca now. And I do understand why she made the change because her old short program, Orange Colored Sky, really was not working for her because it was such a different style than what she was used to that she was having a really hard time getting her jumps while also focusing on selling the choreo. And... It, it looked good at ACI the first time and then kind of just never really worked for her again. So I think it ultimately, it was the smart strategic choice for her team to give her a piece of music that's more comfortable for her. And she has a really good face for dramatic music. She's very good at selling drama. And so I can see how Tosca is a better fit for her at this transition point in her career. But that said, after the news initially came out that she was going to be switching her short program, it really didn't look good for her. And it looked really panicked and desperate. And people were like, oh my god, is she even going to be able to like get the program choreographed before Russian nationals? But she and Brian or Sir apparently made the choice like after IDF. So that was way back in November. And like choreo wise, I think it looked fine. Like it didn't look empty or didn't look like something that was cobbled together at the last minute. Oh yeah, no, I mean, I, I knew it was going to be risky right before nationals, but I wasn't worried about the choreo. I mean, it was plenty of time, I think, for her to nail something, and it did look quite nice. It, and I do think it's going to make things easier for her in the short run, but I don't know if it's a good move for the long-term run of her um, of her change, um, because I think Orange Colored Sky was, was good for her and showed promise at Autumn Classic, but... I mean, she didn't She didn't win Autumn Classic, she placed second, and I've been worried about her mentality since because shortly thereafter at Skate Canada, she changed her costume and her hairstyle back to her old competition hairstyle. Then at IDF, she was losing her ability to really emote properly the sort of like spunky, flirtatious um, atmosphere of Orange Colored Sky, and now she's gone back to something that for her is still easier to emote traditionally, and I worry that part of her brain is going like, oh my god, I'm slipping and I need to go back to what was working before, but that stuff wasn't going to work in the long run necessarily for her, and she kind of needs to change her mentality in a much bigger frame. I agree that some of the mentality issues are there, but I don't think that 
choosing to go to Tosca is a sign that she's slipping mentality. I just think that they were trying to change too much at one time for her. They were trying to give her new styles, they were trying to fix her jumps, they were trying to like get her, fix her techniques and her basic skills. Um, so it was just way too much for her to handle, I think. I hope that she brings back Orange Colored Sky for maybe next season or the season after and when she has like a better fit for herself in Toronto and also has like a better grip on her jumps and her technique. I think for me, um, we've all said like as skating fans in general that this was going to take time, that this wasn't going to be easy, that she wasn't going to be winning everything out of the gate, that she wasn't going to be dominating like she had in the past. But I don't necessarily think that she thought that. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it. Like, with the stuff that Nina mentioned about, like, how the program kind of went down performance-wise as she didn't skate it as well as I think a lot of people expected her to and kept making mistakes. I don't think she thought that she would get the score she got at Autumn Classic. I thought she thought she I think she thought it would be much higher because she did skate it well. But she didn't get the PCX mark she was used to. She didn't get the GOE she was used to. And then from then on, after that con- competition, it just kind of, I don't, don't want to say spirals because I don't think she's spiraling. Because like I said, I, I never once thought that this was going to be easy for her, that she would be clean at every competition. Um, but I don't think she's where she thought she would be and that's hard for her to deal with. And I mean, why wouldn't it be? You're on top of the world one moment and then the next second you're not anymore and you're injured and you're completely having to relearn how to jump and you're in a new place with new faces, speaking a completely different language. So obviously there's going to be upheaval, but I just wonder if she realized how difficult this would be skating, just even just skating-wise, score-wise, if she thought that she'd be in this position or what she thought she would achieve this season, I guess. Especially because um, her jumps look good in practices. In practices, she's still able to pull out good run-throughs. So I think that when she does and in the past has had really not great short programs, I think it's got to be something in her brain. Yeah, especially here. She was skating clean in practices. Uh, I think I was, especially for the free, I was I was concerned for her but when I saw that she was doing a double axle, triple toe, because while her trip, double axle has made improvements, I'm still not confident in it because she does tend to like clam up with it when she's not feeling comfortable, which I think was part of the issue with having the two at the top originally in her planned content. But that said, yeah, she is skating well in practices and it's just not translating when she needs to compete. This was also her first time competing at home since she changed coaches. And so, I mean, obviously she knew a lot of eyes were on her. They were scrutinizing her decision to move to Canada and wondering if she made the right decision. And knowing that, you know, if she didn't do well, then people were going to say, oh, she should have never left to Terry, yada, yada, yada. And so you could see that that was kind of all going on in her brain and it was really impacting her ability to have confidence in herself. And so it was really a shame what happened in the short program um but despite the fact that she faltered quite a bit she had the support of the crowd they were very enthusiastic for her and of the judges she got the second highest pcs in the segment um despite falling and then having an invalidated combo and she got nines or above in skating skills and composition of the program and that is nuts i don't know if i'd agree with that but it's nuts considering that she was 14th overall after the short program to have the second highest pcs i honestly think she needed to have that skate here to know that that her fans in russia are still behind her and still are supporting her her face in the kiss and cry she was like clearly so surprised and happy to have people still cheering for her after the skate she put out so i think that definitely lifted a lot from her shoulders to know that she can go out and fail and still receive the support of her fans at home. Um, So hopefully her free skate went a lot better than her short program here. She had the highest um, free skate, scoring free skate of the senior ladies. And hopefully that's a sign of her turning around and like understanding that it's okay for her to fail and she's gonna lift some of that off of her shoulder some of those feelings that she has to be perfect off of her shoulders and actually perform yeah and hopefully that's something she can do if she goes to the domestic comp later in the spring before worlds to see if she can make the team um that said on the pcs front i mean i don't think she's truly performed that free skate 
this season. I don't think she's really come close, which makes it very difficult to watch because she needs to be carrying that music. That music can't carry her. She needs to be the driving force behind it. Otherwise, it just kind of looks empty before you get to the free skate when the music starts to build intensity. That said, adding the Sal loop combo is the smartest thing she's done all season. Her edge jumps are easily her best jumps outside of the double axle. I don't know why she never thought about doing a loop combo before because the loop especially is probably her best jump. So I think maybe if they had started the season doing the Sal loop and then having the Sal triple toe in the second half, I think maybe that probably would have helped her with her earlier struggles instead of trying to to force the the flip toe and do the Lutzes. Um, I don't know if that was necessarily the smartest thing. I understand they were trying to fix her Lutz edge, but there's only so much you can do at this point with it. But yeah, I really love that combo. I hope she keeps using it. Um, I hope she can get her flip back into a place where maybe down the line eventually she might be able to try a flip loop instead of the flip toe too. Uh, that said though, I think I'm still in the camp of thinking maybe she should have just taken the season off. I don't know if she should go, go to Worlds either. Well, I just meant like in general, I don't think she should have competed on the Grand Prix or tried to push very hard for this world this year, maybe gone to Rest Nance just to like have a comp to, like, get your feet wet, but she was severely injured after the Olympics. By some reports, she wasn't even, couldn't, could barely jump when she was coming back to Canada. So, that said, being in a new environment, completely changing your life, relearning how to jump, and then trying to compete on top of that might not have been the best decision for her, and I think that can account for a lot of the issues she's had. So, I think maybe taking the season off, really working her ass off, and just trying to improve every aspect of her skating in the comfort of being in a private environment could have helped her going into next season, and maybe she wouldn't have struggled as much out of the gate then as she has here. And kind of to piggyback off of that, this is the second time we've seen Yevgenia have a very good free skate following a very disastrous short program. And so it seems that now, because she's not overtly one of the leading ladies in the world, sitting in the underdog position, is taking some of the pressure off of her to deliver when she needs to maintain a lead. And at the same time, it's lighting a fire in her belly that she needs to deliver a clean free skate to be on the podium. And while we've gotten some very good performances from her because of that, it does make me a little bit worried that she's developing a mental block to skating as the leader after the short program, or at this point, even going into a competition as the favorite. Because she still very clearly thinks that she needs to prove to Rustfed and to the judges, and probably to some extent her old team, that she made the right choice to switch coaches and turn her life around and move to Canada. And when she falters, it's that like entire justification seems to kind of start to crumble around her. And I don't necessarily think that that's a good approach going forward like that's not a good comp competitive mentality so i really hope that if her team sees something concerning regarding that that they're going to address it moving on to our other two big russian ladies here um with sofia samadarova and stanislava konstantinova starting off with sofia this is her first senior season and i don't think we've actually seen her miss all season we haven't no yeah i think she's been clean at every competition that she's been at and her jumps are pretty small but she does have very solid technique and she gets her rotations around and so there was some concern about whether or not she would get assigned to euros because she wasn't the top finishing senior lady at russian nationals um and since uh took Dimitrieva is out with pneumonia and stanislava is getting score inflation out the wazoo <laughs> as we have seen. I think if she places ahead of Stanislava at Euros, she's going to get the nod for Worlds. Like, Sofia here was, in my opinion, much better than Stanislava in all fronts, but I'm just concerned that about whether or not she will actually place ahead of Stanislava at Euros. Like, while Sofia does have a higher personal best internationally than Stanislava, they haven't gone head-to-head -head yet, and we all know who, between the two, who Russian Fed is much more invested in for some reason, because I don't understand why. Um, but Stanislava has had Russian Federation's backing in not just this season, but also last season. Um, and they're definitely pushing for Stamslava as a top Russian lady. 
which I don't really understand. Like Sanslava is perfectly fine. She doesn't have like the best jump technique. She hunches over on her landings. She under rotates a lot, but she's not like the worst skater in the world by any means. But Sophia techniques I think is a lot smoother um, and she's just more entertaining to watch I just I don't understand guys I don't understand I just I, you would think after last year when they almost lost three spots at Worlds they would value the consistent skater who they'll know will go out there and give you two perfectly fine performances and have a high enough ranking where if something happens with Alina and um, Elisaveta then there's somebody there that can take up the, their place and like be totally okay and help them keep three spots because they're gonna need it next year a lot. There, this isn't the time to be like mucking around with politics and favoring people who aren't consistent because Stanislava is not consistent. And also, I think the judges really do tend to have like selective blindness when they're calling her jumps because in the free skate here, like she does have a chronic under rotation <sighs> problem. You can see that even in real time. But in the free skate here, I counted at least five out of seven jumping passes that at least should have been reviewed if not called under. And then they ended up calling just her solo triple lutz under. Were we watching the same competition? I don't... Well, that's been consistent throughout the season, even on the Grand Prix. She's had several severe under rotation issues and she rarely, if ever, gets called. I really would love to know why. Yeah, wouldn't we all? But yeah, I have a lot of fears about what Russia is going to be doing with the Sofia versus Stanislava situation because they're pretty much the ones who are up for the third spot at Worlds and unless Evgenia does some miracle in that domestic Russian Cup so I really hope that they both do well at Euros and I hope that they get the scores that they both deserve but if they both skate cleanly, I would always place Sofia above Stanislava. Those scores are just so dependent on where people want people to go. Um, and again, I also just, I, I imagine it, it's very frustrating and it's not very kind of Sofia, who's had a great senior debut, but like if she's not named to the teams, when she deserves to be going there with this consistency in her scores. Like she made Grand Prix final. She, she, yeah, she did. She made the Junior Grand Prix final last year and she wasn't even in close to contention for her spot at Junior Worlds. That Stanislava got. And it's like if she has this great season and then again isn't picked to go to Worlds and then again the Russian Juniors are coming up next season, I, w I just I worry what it'll do for her momentum, which she rightfully should have at this point, coming off of the Grand Prix final. Yep. So looking ahead to the European Championships, we could easily have an all-Russian podium now that Carolina Kostner is no longer competing, which is pretty funny to me. I'm worried about Alina's condition for Euros, but even so, I don't really think that will stop an all-Russian podium. Are there any other ladies that can... May Berenice. Uh, I don't think even a clean May could be Alina even with mistakes. Um, Luna might, if she was clean, she did have a really great competition to start the season, especially that short program where she scored over 70. Um, that said, she was sick for Skate America and she was so-so at Helsinki. So I'm curious to where she's at now, but like her jumps are spectacular. So like she could conceivably make it onto the podium, it, but it would still be highly dependent on what everybody else does. Luna had a great breakout at Euros last season and she was fifth there. So anything's possible. It's just really hard to see Alina being lower than third, even like if she skates like she did at Russian Nationals, which I don't think she will personally. I think she'll have it more together by Euros because she has a month until then and she only had two weeks between grand prix final and russian nationals so i guess yeah we'll see but i wouldn't be surprised if we saw a russian sweep of the podium thank you for listening we hope to see you again for our next episode which is going to be about japanese nationals if you want to get in touch with us then please feel free to contact us via our website in podcast.com or on twitter tumblr or facebook you can find our episodes on youtube itunes google play stitcher and spotify if you enjoy the show and want to help support the team, then please, please, please consider making a donation to us on our coffee page. We'd also like to give a huge shout out to all the listeners who've contributed to the team so far. You can find the links to all our social media and our coffee on our website. 
if you're listening on iTunes, please consider leaving a rating and a review if you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. This has been Kite, Yogita, Sam, and Nina. See you soon.